Well hello there, good morning and welcome to my little arty corner of the internet. Um, thank you everybody for likes, subscribes, comments and sharing my videos, it means a lot and it's lovely that people are joining in and drawing with me and are gaining um, inspiration and perhaps some drawing confidence from from doing this and from watching these things. So what you can see in front of me is a page from my sketchbook um, where I just draw things as well. Um, not necessarily on video, it has to be said because this is an A4 sketchbook so it's rather big. Um, if I fiddle around underneath, here's the drawing from yesterday and you can see how much bigger the space is because it's twice as big. But um, this one I, I did, just because you're going to show you quickly, I decided to put buttons in there and then I did this and sometimes I think, I, I yesterday I was thinking about how open space, leaving open space creates a feeling not just of airiness but it gives breathing spaces where there aren't patterns, where there aren't designs and where you can rest your eyes before going on and I found that some of my artwork recently has been so dense it's become hard to see everything and to take it in it becomes a bit confusing so I managed so I thought oh what have I done here <laughs> but in fairness I drew this before I realized that what I wanted to do was try and put a border around these buttons and to, to, to hold them together as a group and then have other stuff falling off it's sort of like it looks like a contour map of a mountain and if you've ever seen contour maps, um, ordnance survey maps, we call them here in the UK, and you've got the contour lines that show you um, how steep a slope is, but also the height. So around one contour line, you've got a consistent height, you know, it's exactly the same height. And when you know how to read them, you can go, whoop, I'm not walking up that slope because the lines get really close together. Um, but anyway, I, I witter on. And um, actually, contour sort of like learning how to draw cross sections using contour maps you could see the shape of the land where you put a piece of paper across and you mark off the heights and then you transfer that but there's a way of doing it you transfer it and you draw the heights in like a graph and then join them together and that used to fascinate me when I was doing geography in school it's just one of those things is I can make sense of it far more that way than any other way um, logically, I know what it means, but in practical terms, I'll go, no, I'm going to walk up there. And I look and I go, no, I'm not going to walk up there. I need to fly to get up there because I, I can be a bit dim at times when it comes to things like that. But anyway, so when I was adding to this last night, I wanted to add some open spaces. And I did that with these these motifs here. I'll, if you want, I'll, I'll, draw, I'll draw one to show you how I drew it um, later on. But then I was drawing these again and that led to this morning while I was coming around sat in bed listening to some stuff um, I decided to see if I could vary the shape or the, the design of these because they're really quite simple and so I've got a whole pile here so that's what I'm going to do today so I'm going to just move that out of my way so I can see it as a reference this I haven't done anything to since my video yesterday um, oh, life, sort of like, yeah, but um, I'm going to use the back though of it because it's a sketchbook page and I am just going to pop a border in, in pencil because that will just give me an indication of how far I want to go and I like to leave space around the edge of a page. And yeah, this, which way do I want it? Yeah, that'll do fine. Not that it matters much. Okay, so let me start off by showing how I drew one of my open airy ones. And they are really, they're really simple. So it's one arc, second arc, and I like to put little rounded caps on them when they come to the edge. Like it just makes them look cuter. 
and then somewhere along this inside arc you choose a spot and you draw a little spiral and then you just draw lines that are equidistant as much you know sort of like roughly the same distance all the way along it's not important if they're not and that is just re I, I just love this little spiral here as a break in yes another one of these lines um the outside is just petal shapes that have got quite um straight sides and then a curvy top and i draw them all mostly in one go and if i get a little gap like that because i picked my pen up and moved it i'll just fill it in so it's not so obvious and then in the center i'm just putting little lines because it just adds interest and it also adds a darker colour here adds darkness which gives it a feeling that these are tucked underneath that particular arch there and that's all it is and with these this one because it's on a corner I am going to create it as a corner and they are like the corners just turned up like it's a piece of paper that's just curled up so how did I do that well I did it by drawing that shape in like that but it would have been easier to draw the curved corner and then add that but yeah but it's just a nice way of adding some open space into a design and that means that I'm quite I'm, I'm much happier with that particular drawing than I was okie dokes <coughs> so I said I really really liked draw and what I'm going to do is I am going to add some lumps and bumps here because I want a base. Isn't it funny how I start adding bases? And I like to have something to draw these from. Oh, see, I could have done this before I started, except that I didn't really know what I was going to do this morning until I started drawing those. So that's a start. I'll come back to those as I need them. So this kind of shape that I liked, if you remember, it's a line as curvy or as straight as you like. It has a little bulb on the top. And then in my drawings, I put a little circle in and coloured this all black. But this morning I was doing it like that, so it looks a bit furry around it. You may not be able to see that, so if I zoom in, you see the difference it's sort of um that it's all kind of feathery and you know little lines in there so it's a different kind of texture that we've got there so the next thing try and keep this under the camera was a line drawn parallel to that original stem and then we get towards this case of flaring out. Now that's not a particularly pretty one but on this side but it is what it is. And I am just going to, if I add some weight there I have to do it on this side as well. Actually that works quite nicely it does make it look like I've got something curling upwards and inwards here which is quite nice. So that works quite nicely which means i also then have to thicken those lines but that's quite that's quite nice actually that works okie dokes so let's draw another like this of course these can grow in any direction they can be any size you like and i'll do a simplish variation on these Get your hand in, suddenly you get better at it. 
I'll put those those little bits in there because I really I like that I like the, the feel that that denseness gives there okay and then a simple simple kind of thing to do would be to add that kind of shape so it's um, almost like a hill on its you know on its side so we go up, out and in and it looks almost like this has folded over it works best if you've got um, somewhere that is a bit narrower on the side sort of like to my mind anyway so that's a really simple simple variation yeah it is the other kinds of simple variations do that one is to vary the shape so this one is much more rounded so it's much more leaf like I'm not going to put any details on it other than perhaps this and I can see I'm going to end up with thick thick lines here aren't I yep but that's okay again it is what it is it's a sketchbook page angler it doesn't have to be perfect and then if I take one that'll grow there and perhaps we'll carry that line on grow up to here I can make it even more rounded which I actually quite like the rounded ones I filled the whole of that central piece in black which again is another variation if you wish but then I could also do something like that as well or put a succession of um, circles on top. Or oh, oh. let's have a look. So I don't know what I don't think you saw that but I drew a row of circles here and then just put partial ones next door so it looks like we've got all seeds bundled up together and this reminds me a bit of those lords and ladies I've been telling you about the arum lilies and so here I'm going to do the classic shape of the leaf except it's not really a leaf it's uh, oh, it's not a petal, it is a leaf behind it. And then there's that cluster in the middle, which is a nice variation. Okie dokes. I'm just going to pop some of these in here so that I have a base. Simply because I can. And I'll come back and add everything else to them later on. And here, where I've done the rounded bits at the bottom, which I quite like, rather than a straight edge here, I've just popped a straight line in because I can. Okie dokes. So, started changing the shapes. So let's carry on in that vein. So here, instead of the teardrop shape, I am going to put a, a seed here and perhaps a little another little circle at the bottom so it looks like it's connected I could have done that left that blank but I didn't and then take this and create something that's more of an oval shape and what I could do Thing is you won't get to see it all if I do it there so let's just do another version here I'll go back to this one I'm just gonna instead of either all black or the, the flips or just leaving them white 
going to do stripes. So let me just go up and do that kind of shape. Then what I'm doing here is I'm connecting the edge of this, connecting this, you know, starting from this edge. Excuse my brain, it's not enough tea yet. It is, oh good gosh, it's 10 to 9. I was hoping to get to do this earlier. So I've got to get a shed load of work done today if I can. Shed load, slang for a lot. Over here in the UK, I've got a shed load of work to do. Um, not that I'm working in a shed, but it's just a phrase. But yeah, so take this line I've drawn around it and then I've just drawn down here until I get there. And again, it's that giving that idea that this is something that's more perhaps wider, but it's curling in over the, the edge and that illusion can be brought to bear with shadowing and everything else. So I just realised that's something I could do. That's not one variation I did this morning. I actually quite like that. So let me have a look. I'm just going to, you'll see this one is that I can just bring this one down and perhaps this here. So it feels that this is almost circling or hugging whatever's inside. I mean, in reality, these, these actually do overlap and you, there is a way, I'm sure, yes, there is a way of doing that. So let me have a let me have a think because I need to, I'll draw this in pencil first because I want the shape at the top and then we want the spike in the middle and then I'll want the sides just to come down like that that'll work okay <laughs> so. The way I'm going to draw this is I'm going to take the line here and I'm going to draw this around as if I am drawing that same shape. But when I come down the other side, I'm not going to bring it down to meet here, but I am going to take it so it meets a bit further up so it looks like it's going behind this one. And so I will draw this side in and then that side in too. And then the last thing I need to do is put my central piece in. And again, with this one, I'm going to do it striped, solid stripes for now they're quick and easy to do but I can add a sparkle with some white so if I zoom out just different ways of doing the same kind of thing just by adding a couple of extra lines I'll draw this one again and I'll do it here so you can see perhaps I'll do it with a different one of these shapes so I start on one side I go up, I draw this shape in, this is going behind and so it needs to come down but we don't want it to connect here so this is a central line, we want to connect it as if it's tucked behind then I'll draw a line down from there this one's a bit trickier because it's behind here, but it's the same kind of idea is that I can draw it like this and then I can imagine where this inner thing would be. I did that unconsciously. I've actually echoed the shape of this in the seed at the t or this this berry or whatever it is at the top there so that's quite nice and if you really you know
taking an O1 um, micron pen here. So these lines, you'd have this one going behind where you wouldn't see it again and this echoed one going all the way down. So again, that helps build that illusion of one thing tucked behind another. So those are really quite nice. And in some ways, I'd also have a look. I'm going to try to have a look at this in pencil here. Because would that work where they come down there? Possibly. Let me draw one and see. So this, I'm just going to do one that is the... This classic kind of one and... Oops. I'm not sure that works quite as well, to be honest. But I just thought I'd have a look and see. So I've drawn these bits in but without overlapping and I've also made it a bit heavy handed. Yeah. It is what it is. Okay. Any other shapes? Yes. So I'm going to draw one up here. Just do it that way. And then that kind of shape. So it's more triangular in form, which actually I quite like. And of course, these are easy enough then. Now that darker line there makes a bit more sense. So of course, a simpler variation is to, I'm just going to put a, is to lengthen or shorten that particular shape on the top. So it's the same thing here, but I've just condensed it down and also to make it wider, which is perhaps what I'll do in, with another one. Okay, so... This is fun, because I realised I haven't drawn the outside shapes there, so I do need to do this, so... kind of ginkgo shape in it. Ginkgo leaf in shape. I like that one. I do. I'm getting quite a forest of them here, aren't I? Okay, another shape. That I found an interesting one is more of a rectangular kind of shape, rounded rectangle but rectangular because that's quite an interesting one and what I did with these as well and I will draw another one in and I'm going to start to pretend that somewhere they're connected um, and they're branching because I'm getting very tangled up at the bottom So instead of thinking about them being filled on the side, this one would be a perf you know, lovely candidate for that. Just think about adding something that's like a little furl on the top as if it's curled over. So that's quite nice. And again, it's the, sh it's the addition of shadow, of deeper and lighter colours that will bring this out, that will give, give more form and volume to this. Um, one other simple one I did, and I'll do this here, is now this I really liked because I do like tall, thin, elegant kind of motifs. And instead of drawing these auras, I created 
this spathe as if it almost is a leaf and that's quite nice um yeah i could i could have these coming down as if this met in the middle but this then gives the opportunity to branch this as if it's a different plant which I quite liked and me being me I really didn't want to draw a whole branch full so I just thought it could be quite fun just to do collections of seed like or smaller leaves going down I guess it depends what colour you draw you you add to them that creates what you want them to be. And they get bigger and more globby as you get to the bottom, just as you would with I say globby. But you'd get a lot more leaves together at the base of a plant perhaps. The leaves get bigger as you go down the stem generally. So that's quite nice and just perhaps one there. And the odd couple in between just to break that space up. I actually quite like that. But again, I could have just done exactly the same. It would be more difficult to turn it into a branch. Okay. Over here, I am going to do one more here. Of this kind of shape. You get... You're beginning to get the idea with these of how lovely they are to do. This one I put just a little dip in the top so it's almost heart shaped and this side is that little bit narrower so it's quite nice just to put that kind of furl on that side. Okay I think these were all the simplish ones I did but you know me I don't stick to simple. So I'm going to draw these now as if they they are branching. Well it doesn't really matter, I mean for all I know they could be floating in thin air. Okay, so I am going to take this kind of idea where I'm not ordering these to begin with but I am ordering the stem, I should say. But I am doing this. Now here I've kept this inner one a bit separate to the rest, so it could look like a seed pod. I could have joined them all to the same point, but to create that ordering around the stem, I'm going to draw little spiraling kind of thing there, mooka. It's a kind of mooka, isn't it? And add that instead. Now then this is going to have to find its way down behind here, but it'd be hidden behind that one, so that one makes sense. Okay, so just by doing something simple like this, it changes it. So let's have a look here. Um, again, I'll just do that simple kind of shape and I'll start with this wonky shape. I was gonna say classic shape. It is a classic shape, but it is a bit wonky. So I am going to do that kind of shape on the side. So I've started part way up this line and I've drawn a circle in and down. So again, I suppose this is a kind of mooka or something, you know, something like that. So I've got this supporting these. And then what I did looks okay like that. I could take this down and bring it like this, but what I 
you know, join the point here and do it. But what I did I added this and then because I really needed to I decided I'd add just another one and tucked in under here and again just giving it that stem now this would um, come down here and I think I've got three lines on each side yeah Pedantic, yes. Welcome to me making sure it's there. So it looks like it sort of like bends down and and behind there. So that's another one. I quite like that. Um, variations again. There's this one, but I drew inside there, and then I created quite triangular. Leaves or oh, bits coming off. And um, I did want to put a little aura in there, and then I did add some seeds underneath, like that. So that's quite nice. This looks really nice. It looked a lot more elegant when I did this really tall. Of course I can do because if I colour it in black, nobody will know the difference now, will they? Hopefully. It's a bit wonky, but wonky is fine. So I've got anything that's remarkably different here? I don't think so. Have a look at this one. Let's do that. So this is drawing kind of a leaf shape around that central um, seed, blob, stamen, whatever. And then ordering it at the same distance and perhaps of this go out and then I bring the line back and connect it with the outer point so it's it flares out that kind of way that's that's a different variation it's similar but different um, oh, here's another shape I think do that one like that well, I'll just put some stripes in and this one is a lot more rounded I suppose it's more like a spoon shape but it does look like a spoon and that works nicely and with this one I did aura that line again And then here, I decided to put some seed shapes there, but I also use those to run or to anchor an aura both above them and below them, which adds that kind of interest. So many things you can do.
and I don't think I've I've touched the bottom of this okay one more I think this one I actually wanted it much narrower than that and more of a shape but here I went up to almost up to these bits that are pointing out and did quite an angular kind of spiral there so they, they actually they fall down quite nicely um, these and they look all, all old and tattered and what have you and um, there was another one I just saw and I thought oh those are quite nice and again it's this kind of um, that's a better kind of shape I wanted it a bit more rounded at the top but that's okay but here it's adding spirals to the side and just drawing a line that will it's almost as if that line carries on into the spiral so that's quite nice it's quite heavy and bulky for this one but um, I can always add more here and that changes this to a whole different kind of feel but it's all started in the same basic kind of way so there we are we've got I don't know how many variations on a theme there and I know there are loads and loads and loads and loads more but what I'm going to do, or oh, if I can pick this up, I will do, there we are, I've got it, is I have here, which you may see whoosh across, my um, chalk pastels. Dig out a um, tortiana too. I want a, I think I want a brown, oh, yeah, I want a brownish kind of colour I think or a darker colour don't want to go as dark as black because that is just El Dafto oh there's more I really need to find a little dish to put these in or a little pot because they they get so mixed up with these looks like there might be something down there I don't think there is no there isn't okie dokes um shall I go with green it's good to go with any colour, it really doesn't matter. Um, I'm looking for a specific colour, which I can't see for looking. That's the biggest problem I have, that, that kind of colour. It's, um, it's a sort of blue-grey. And the one thing I do want to do is where I've got some pencil lines, I will erase them because I'll get, I won't get confused, but I just, this will. Okay, so I'm going to pop some around this in the middle and I'm going to roughly put it in the kind of shape that I want to create and I am just going to give some shadow behind here. Strange colour because this typically this one wasn't clean. The, to um, the tortillon, it's strictly a paper stump. This is all made out of compressed paper, whereas the tortillons are made from paper that's been round very tightly into a point, or glued together, or however they make them. So this had some green on it, which actually is working out quite nicely. And I do want to leave, on this one, I'm going to leave a lighter edge. Okay, this one, I'm going to... Add the chalk like this and I'm going to create it as if there's a shadow beneath this that's where the darkest is going to be okay, I'll just buff that one out and with these I'm just trying things out and giving ideas for how and seeing how this could be shadowed or coloured so today I'm doing shadows rather than anything else 
And I will just get that a little bit spread out, not too much. I really want it to stay really in one place. But what I am going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of this just to add some shadow around the edge. And leave very much a highlight. Um, between the two. This may need a little bit more softening and blending in, if it will. Chances are it won't because I think it's mostly stuck, sunk, stuck into, sunk into the paper. This one, where I've got these curling over, this would all be dark down here and there would be an area of shadow I think in the middle because this would sink backwards. Let's have a look and see how that works. I'm not going to worry too much if I go over the um, that blobby bit in the middle because I can fix that at a later time if I wish. So that gives some shadow on the edge could do with it being darker here so you just add some more and blend it in. Lovely thing about chalk pastels is that you don't have to be exact exact where you put them because if you're using the a paper stump or a tortillon then they do the work of blending it out for you and you can and, and so any imperfections in, in where you put things will even out if you're, you're cautious enough with them. Okie dokes, I said about this furled thing here, so I, there would be shadow underneath this, so that's why I'm going to put some shadow. And again, I'm just going to blend it out a bit. And I just think that with this one, I'm not going to try to get any other kind of bending going on. I'll keep this one simple. I want down there and then just blend this up a bit. So there's this area of highlight there, which gives that feeling that this is bending up and back and up again. We could put a tiny bit along the back edge here. And there most probably would have been enough just on the paper stump for that. With this one, I'm going to put some shadow underneath this bit. And again, just blending it in and just teasing it out just a little. Well, I have got a bit of shadow there. But and I'll add some shadow down here. The thing with the chalk pastels that I've got here, my Carbothellos, is that they, unless I've got a very sharp point on them, which I haven't, they're quite difficult to get into tiny areas and tiny spaces. It's possible. Okay, so let me have a look. Which ones, which ones do I particularly want to have a look at with the shadow? Oh, it was these, wasn't it? The, the ones where they... I've given that illusion of them furling over. So where these seem to overlap, which is this area overlaps this way underneath the overlap, I've put some shadow. Quite a lot actually. And I've put some here in this area, just here, but I want to be careful how far I'll buff it out. And the same on this side where there we go, that's better. So that, that helps to see how those fold over one another. If anything, I can blend this out a bit to give a bit more shadow up here. This one, 
I added just some shadow there underneath this one. Again, being careful how far I take that shadow out because I really don't want it all the way out. And then I am going to add some shadow here and round this area. You can see how sloppy I am adding it because I know that as I'm using this to blend the colour out, I'll smooth out those imperfections as long as I'm not, you know, stabbing the paper, the, 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 the pencil, the chalk pencil into the paper, it'll work. This one here looks a bit odd, so I am going to add a little bit of shadow along these edges just to give that that feeling that these are sticking up and catching more light and again I'll do the same with these I think let me just see how it works with this one going very monochrome here And it's quite nice if um, a different colour, let me try a different colour in the middle of this. I'm looking for colours, a colour I'd like to use. I'm looking for one that would blend in perhaps a bit more, would be sympathetic perhaps with the, the green background. This one isn't quite the same colour, it's not a yellowy green. Let's see how this works. So I want the green really quite dense here. And here I just want it darker around the edges. I really want it darker in the middle. It's just that hint, that haze of green going up so it looks like it's a different colour. And that's quite nice because it differentiates the inside from the outside. Those colours are very different. So am I happy with that? Most probably not. But it's what it is, isn't it? As I keep saying, it is what it is. Okie dokes. So I think you get the idea. I could spend the rest of my day working with these because I really like this. Lots of things drawn here, lots of ideas. Um, lots of ideas for, I say lots of ideas, some ideas for colour and shading. Um, but I've got a whole, whole garden of these growing, haven't I? I'm glad I put some, something in at the bottom for interest, just for interest. So there's a whole pile of ideas here and you can mix and match them because if you like that, you could put it in any of them. If you like the stripy ones, you could use them across. If you like the idea of adding this support, these leaves here or these ones or others, then you can add those. Um, I, I haven't even added anything like pattern um, because part of me thinks it would be really good fun to behind this to put something like Knightsbridge, but, you know, checkerboard pattern, but with the lines the contour lines sort of like starting quite you know quite close together but spreading out at the top and close together at the bottom and getting wider there so the squares get from small to wide um, as you go across following the contour of the, the leaf that could be interesting but I'm not quite sure how that would work um, because my head my head is thinking yeah but you'd lose this but I think you'd have to put an aura around that as well to keep it quite separate um, but that's something I may work on I'm not going to do it now because I've said it haven't I so I'm gonna to have to yeah so let me have a look let me try and see if that will work um, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to first do this and then I'm going to put an aura all the way around this. Now somebody will tell me what Zen Tangle Tangle pattern that is. 
So I've drawn the central bit, that line with the blob, the seed on the end, and then I've gone around and aurored it. Then we're going to do the same. I'm not going to aurer it for these, I'm just going to draw the leaf shape I'd like or the background shape. I'm going to go with this. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my fine shall I use my I will use my finer pen because I just happen to think that might work a bit better here is I'm going to just draw as if they're coming from a central place. Lines that gradually spread out. I mean, I haven't done a very good job here, but because that one really should have come down a bit in that one, but it'd be fine. And then the ones at the bottom will start closer together so you can see it must probably not because my hands in the way so I've started down here with quite small gaps and then as I go up I'm going to widen these posh word incrementally a teeny bit at a time so they get bigger and then biggest ones are here and then I'm going to colour these in, in that checkerboard pattern. I think I could have done this better, to be honest. Um, I think I could have done with a couple more vertical lines to really squash the space together. Fill these in, I'm going diagonally corner to corner from the of these squares. Um, I because it's so easy if you're not paying attention, if you have a momentary lapse of attention, you forget what you're doing, you end up with two squares coloured in the same or two blank ones left. Yep, we've all been there. God, I've had some disasters with that as well. So, these are big enough that I can go to the other pen now, which of course is on the other side of my camera, which is where I've just popped that one. But if I go to the bigger pen, I'll be able to colour these in a lot quicker. Bit like watching paint dry I'm sure but so just one more yeah just one more after this one it frustrates me when I see people colouring large areas in with very fine nib pens and I'm thinking bound to have something that's got a bigger nib. That doesn't, that's kind of working, but I think what this needs as well, perhaps is a, another border around it. Yeah, possibly. This one looks a bit strange as it is. I just think it needs Again, this one could do with something like that. And I also think this one would benefit from having that there. That helps a bit, makes it look a bit, a bit more sensible in its way. Um, I'm not sure if that works. It was an idea. I haven't got the, the op art going very well there. But it's a possible thing to do. I could have made the squares much smaller because I was drawing with a tiny pen, but I didn't. But that space is, is ripe um, within these 
for adding patterns and tangles, you know, just by ordering this or creating some way of, you know, um, finishing this off because that that's a possibility as well. Um, is if we draw the shape we want in the middle. And you can see I've drawn a kind of definite place where things go together, as it were. Um, it's possible to, it's an unusual way of doing it, I suppose, to how we've done it. So I drew the shape that I wanted there, but I, I closed it off at the bottom so that there can be a distinct stem, I suppose, like this, um, perhaps. It's not very good, but I think you get the idea. So I haven't really thought this one through. That's a really, yeah, that's a really um, sturdy stem. It reminds me, just reminds me of a calla lily. And then you've got the, up, the ability then to put pattern in the space behind it. And I'll just very quickly, I keep saying I'll just do this very quickly. I've finished now. See how addictive things like this can be in a positive way. I'm just putting off wrangling with dogs, as in dog drawings, and I do mean wrangling. I'm finding it quite difficult at the moment. Um, crisis of confidence in myself and my abilities to draw such creatures and templates and so on. I'll get there. This would look so much nicer, I think, if I'd chosen to do this in a colour or in, even in grey. I think the black is just a bit too obvious. I think it would be nice if it was more subtle. And of course today with the you know the numbers of fine liners and other pens that are in such beautiful pastel colours or soft soft um softer colours, um I should say, not bright pastels, but you get the soft greeny greys and so on, they'd really look nice in the background rather than this. And I do feel almost like this needs another aura around it as well, just to widen that and make it look a bit more floral like. But possibilities? Yeah, not sure. But you don't know until you try and that's I think that's the point of it is that I had fun playing with different shapes and different ways of widening this very simple area here because this is the original one and then all the others are based on this idea of this central stem with leaves around it um, and I've got a page full well almost there's a couple of gaps here so don't be surprised if I show you this tomorrow that they'll be filled in because once I've done what I need to do in terms of um, drawing today it you know the adorable dogs then I am likely to return to this so and I'll decide then what I do tomorrow it may be a colouring template which I'll draw on paper I'll see how I get on but for now I'd like to say thank you very much for joining me I hope this has given some inspiration that you'll try some of these variations out and use them in your own drawing and of course just a thank you for sticking with me for liking sharing subscribing and everything else that people do on youtube and take care of yourselves take time to be creative and i'll see you again very soon take care now bye bye